Hi, this is Victoria from CrashCrypto.com. In this video, I will be covering EOS, a blockchain-based development platform designed for building decentralized applications. As always, we are not paid or mandated to do any of our reviews. This is just a personal opinion and analysis for educational purposes only and not financial advice. Please always do your own research before making any investment decisions. With EOS, developers can write and deploy smart contracts that power decentralized applications, or dApps for short, and decentralized autonomous organizations. EOS currently has a market cap of over $1.8 billion and ranks among the top 10 cryptocurrencies in the world. The platform's native token has a ticker symbol EOS. EOS tokens were first released as an ERC20 token on the Ethereum blockchain, but a mainnet token swap occurred after EOS version 1.0 was deployed in June of this year. EOS is often referred to as a decentralized operating system. Holding EOS tokens represents a proportional share in the network bandwidth, storage, and computational resources. Dev developers must stake a certain number of tokens in order to cover the resources used by their applications, and they receive those tokens back if their application gets taken down. With this staking model, users can interact and use dApps for free. The EOS network also has no transaction fees, and block producers earn rewards from newly minted tokens. EOS was developed and launched by a software company known as BlockOne. They released the software as free and open source. BlockOne built the EOS platform to incorporate three major features, scalability, flexibility, and usability. The platform aims to be scalable by supporting thousands of commercial scale dApps, facilitating inter-blockchain communication, and separating authentication from execution. It aims to be flexible through the ability to freeze and fix faulty or bug-laced apps and incorporating generalized role-based permissions. And it aims to be usable by providing a web toolkit for interface development, self-describing interfaces, and a declarative permission scheme. EOS uses Delegated Proof-of-Stake, or DBOS for short, as its consensus mechanism. It utilizes 21 block validators and integrated Byzantine fault tolerance. With DBOS, blocks are validated by a pre-selected group of nodes and allows for high transaction throughput. Byzantine fault tolerance is the ability of a network to handle situations where nodes go down or malicious nodes broadcast faulty information. EOS is theoretically Byzantine fault tolerant because 15 out of the 21 block producers are required to confirm a transaction. In other words, a two-third majority is needed. For a more detailed discussion on Byzantine fault tolerance and the reason why a two-third majority is important, please refer to our article on practical Byzantine fault tolerance on our website. EOS transactions are typically confirmed within one second with a 99.9% .9 certainty as a new block is created every 0.5 seconds. Dan Larimer has said in a blog post that EOS can theoretically support over 1,000 transactions per second. It aims to scale to 6,000 to 8,000 transactions per second in the future. EOS also implements a mechanism called transaction as proof of stake, where every transaction must include part of the hash of a recent block header. This makes it difficult to forge counterfeit chains as a counterfeit chain would not be able to migrate transactions from the legitimate chain. I will now go over some of the key features of EOS. The first is its DPoS consensus mechanism, which I just talked about. EOS will also feature the ability to do things in parallel, allowing for faster transaction speeds and more scalability. This is planned for implementation in future versions of EOS. Another feature is network flexibility. This means that if a dApp is faulty and contains a critical bug, the elected block producers can freeze it until the issue is resolved. EOS will also have high transaction throughput. As I mentioned earlier, EOS can theoretically support over 1,000 transactions per second with the potential to scale even higher. Owning EOS tokens represents a proportional share of the network resources. Developers must prove they hold a sufficient number of tokens in order to create dApps on the EOS blockchain. EOS has no transaction fees. In other words, sending EOS tokens to another user or using them for a dApp requires no fee. And finally, the EOS constitution is a multi-party contract entered into by members of the EOS ecosystem. This constitution has 18 articles that outline the rules and user rights governing the EOS blockchain. In terms of the project's key milestones, the technical white paper was released just last year in June. In September, Dawn 1.0 was released, along with the first release of the EOS software development kit. Dawn 2.0 was released at the end of the year. In January 2018, the EOS Blockchain Focused Fund was formed. 
Block One and Galaxy Digital also announced a joint venture for a $325 million EOS fund. In April, Dawn 3.0 was released and Block One signed a $200 million joint venture partnership to accelerate Asia-focused EOS ecosystem development. In May, Dawn 4.0 was released. The following month, version 1.0 of the open source EOS blockchain software was released as well as the EOS developer portal and EOS mainnet was launched. Following the mainnet launch, the project team has so far released several updates of their platform. In terms of future development, Block1 has already committed to investing over $1 billion into projects focused on growing the EOS ecosystem through their VC firm. They also host EOS hackathons around the world and fund prizes for the winning projects. There is currently no updated roadmap for the future technical development of EOS. EOS is an open source project and its source code and development progress can be viewed on GitHub. The EOS blockchain has a native token called EOS. These tokens represent a share in the platform's resources such as bandwidth, storage capacity, and processing power. Developers who want to build dApps on the EOS blockchain need to prove they hold a certain number of tokens and then stake those tokens to deploy their application. They need to stake tokens to cover the nominal cost of account creation to sign up new users for their dApp. And they also need to stake tokens for any storage, CPU power, or bandwidth used by the user. If the developer takes their application down, they can get their staked tokens back. The EOS Resource Center provides developers with the most up-to-date staking cost calculations. The baseline costs as of December 7 are outlined on this slide. This token model is unique to EOS and differs from other smart contract platforms such as Ethereum. For Ethereum, Ether is used to pay transaction fees and upfront costs of deploying smart contracts for dApps. There are no transaction fees on the EOS blockchain. This means that 21 block producers receive compensation solely from newly minted tokens in each block. The inflation rate was initially set at 5% on mainnet release. This may be updated in the future, but it will not exceed 5%. EOS is an open source free platform that was released by Block1. Block1 was founded in early 2017 and is registered in the Cayman Islands, but operates out of Hong Kong, Los Angeles, and Virginia. The biographies of key team members of EOS are summarized on this slide. In terms of the project's strengths, EOS has a lot of money to fund the network, much more than most other blockchain projects at the moment. It was announced earlier that EOS VC had $1 billion, although the number should be lower now as EOS prices have dropped substantially since the announcement. Unlike most of the other popular blockchain platforms, users do not need to pay transaction fees on EOS, which is a plus. EOS also uses a virtual machine that supports a number of popular programming languages, making it easier for developers to build on the platform. The consensus mechanism used by EOS enables a high transaction throughput, so users can see their transactions confirmed almost instantly. This is a lot faster than most decentralized proof-of-work blockchains and allows for scalable use of dApps. EOS has flexibility in the sense that one bug in a dApp will not render it useless or impact the health of the network. The 21 block validators can freeze the application and allow developers to fix any issues before it goes live again. As I mentioned before, developers need to stake EOS tokens in order to use the blockchain. This model ensures they have a vested interest in their work and the whole ecosystem, and it does not require non-refundable deployment payments like other platforms. This model could be more attractive to developers. In terms of weaknesses, with transactions being free, this means users can easily spam the network with minimal costs. It is not easy to create an EOS account to use the token and it requires a fee. This could have a negative impact on user adoption. The number of block producers for EOS is relatively low at 21. This means there is a considerable amount of centralization with each block producer holding a significant amount of influence over the network. EOS cannot compare to the level of decentralization with other major blockchains such as Bitcoin or Ethereum. The governance of EOS relies heavily on voting, but with low participation at the moment, this may lead to ineffective governance. The Huobi voting collusion scandal highlights the weakness of a DPoS system. A lot of thought must be put into the selection of supernodes and the incentive mechanism. Dan Larimer, the CTO, has a tendency to leave current projects and move on to the next one. CMIP, which is one of his previous projects, recently announced that it would be laying off 70% of its staff. Although Dan has said he is not leaving EOS, he has said that he is thinking about a new blockchain focused on currency. The market is concerned because of his previous history of leaving unfinished projects. Block1 claims the EOS network is flexible in the sense that faulty dApps can be frozen while the bugs are being fixed. 
However, this same power allows for block producers to reverse transactions that have been previously confirmed. One of the biggest features of blockchain technology is immutability, but this is not present in the EOS network. According to the EOS constitution, any EOS token holder who has not made a transaction within three years could have their tokens taken away. This signals more centralization and sets a dangerous precedent. And finally, the defining feature of success for smart contract platforms like EOS is building a strong developer community. EOS is still significantly behind Ethereum and other platforms, and it may be difficult to catch up to or surpass these platforms. Overall, we have a C rating for EOS. EOS has chosen to sacrifice things like decentralization and permissionless to build a high-performance DAP platform. It has potential to succeed if more blockchain developers begin to migrate to EOS, but a lot has to be done before that happens. We could see EOS being used for certain use cases that do not require maximum censorship resistance that need high scalability. There are quite a lot of activities on the EOS blockchain, with the most active DAPs having several million transactions per week, However, as transactions are free, it is hard to see whether these transactions are inflated or not. The most important metric for smart contract platforms is developer activity, and EOS is behind when compared to other platforms such as Ethereum. According to DAT Radar, there are 160 deployed EOS dApps compared to over 1,200 for Ethereum. As it is still a pretty new blockchain platform, it relies on the founding team to work on the project and deliver on the project's vision. However, the CTO of Dan Larimer's recent comments about potentially working on a new project does not bring confidence to the market, especially when he has a history of leaving unfinished projects. And finally, we believe there are flaws in the design of EOS's governance system. The block producer voting scandal highlights that the selection of block producers may need to include things other than just voting with EOS tokens, otherwise the system could be manipulated. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch our video on EOS. If you haven't already, please follow us on social media or join our official Telegram announcement channel to get our latest updates. The invite link to our Telegram channel can be found in the video description. See you next time and keep on crushing your crypto game.